Hey everybody, it's been a while since I've talked about audio quality. I think part of that is I forget that this is still a mystery to so many podcasters until I see a post like, how do I get that professional podcast sound? Getting good sounding audio is easier than ever these days. The days of needing to be an audio engineer in order to sound good are gone. Before diving in, Let's address why audio quality matters. You have a short period of time to make that first impression on a new listener. If the audio quality isn't good enough to them, they'll press stop before getting to hear how good your content is. And on top of that, good audio quality helps with listener retention and it increases your credibility. So here are five ways to improve your podcast audio. Number one, your mic. Audio quality starts at the recording phase. If you aren't using an external mic or you're using a condenser like a Blue Yeti, this is the easiest way to improve your audio. A decent external mic will sound much better than the tiny mics found in phones and laptops and webcams. And unless you're recording in a neutral sounding space, you'll be better served with a dynamic mic. Dynamic mics are, they're more forgiving of sonic imperfections in your space, while condensers, they act more like a magnifying glass on those imperfections. Number two, mic position. Your mic position is one of the most important, yet one of the most overlooked parts of recording. A few inches makes a big difference, just listen to how much of a difference it makes when I move my mic. I suddenly sound a lot more distant and you hear more of my room. At least in theory you do. My room's fairly well treated, so you're probably not hearing as much of it as you might in your own space. And now that I'm back to, I don't know, about an, an inch or two away from the mic, it sounds much more present and close, doesn't it? Let me switch over to my Audio-Technica ATR2100X, which is sitting on my desk and I'm using the included desktop stand. This doesn't sound too good, does it? It's about eight inches away from my mouth. But what about now as I bring it up to my mouth? Does it sound better? This is why it's so crucial to get the mic closer to your mouth if you want the best audio quality. Dynamic mics should be one to four inches away from your mouth, depending on how loud you speak. Me, I need to be right on top of the mic because I just have a quiet voice. If you have a louder voice, you might be able to get by with it three to four inches away. Number three, clean up your audio. There are various tools that are available to you these days that make it easy to clean up your audio. My weapon of choice is Supertone Clear. It's a plugin that offers noise and reverb reduction that, in my opinion, is the best option out there for most podcasters. It's affordable and does a good job. Let's check it out real quick in this example. So here we are in Hindenburg. I've got a clip here which has a good amount of reverb. Let's play a short sample of it. Uh, we were focused on really changing the way that organizations protected themselves uh, with respect to application security. We saw a pretty big gap in the market. As we can tell, there's a lot of reverb on this. It was recorded with a condenser in a very large office that had probably glass doors, real bare walls. So it sounds like he's in a cave. Let's bring up Supertone Clear. It has three knobs. We won't even pay attention to the middle knob. Ambience reduces the noise in the recording, and voice reverb will turn down the reverb. When I'm working on audio like this, I'll adjust the reverb first, because the reverb tends to mask a lot of noise. And I should know on an example like this, any kind of audio that has this much reverb on it, there aren't any tools out there that will allow you to dial all of it out. The best we can do is to try to get as much of it out as we can 
without getting a lot of artifacts or making it more challenging for the listener to pay attention to. So what I'll do first is I'll start by reducing the reverb. Uh, we were focused on really changing the way that organizations protected themselves uh, with respect to application security. We saw a pretty big gap in the market where there was an opportunity to get closer to protecting applications. And so if we go all the way down to negative infinity, I start hearing a little artifacting. It sounds a little processed. We could probably get away with that, but I've, I'd prefer to keep a little bit of the reverb in there. It'll sound a little more natural and it'll be a little easier on the listener's ears. So I take it to the extreme and then I'll back it up some. Uh, we were focused on really changing the way that organizations protected themselves uh, with respect to application security. We saw a pretty big gap in the market. So I think this is a pretty good place to set it. And like I said, since reverb tends to mask noise, now all of a sudden we can hear that there's HVAC running in the background. Uh, we were focused on really changing the way that organizations protected themselves uh, with respect to application security. We saw a pretty big gap in the market where there was an op- You can really hear it in between the words. So what I'll do is I'll just adjust the ambience until I hear it gone. We we're focused on really changing the way that organizations protected themselves uh, with respect to application security. We saw a pretty big gap in the market where there was an opportunity to get closer to protecting applications and APIs by being directly in those things rather than around them. So there I've done a pretty decent job of cleaning this up. Could it be done better? Maybe if I spent a lot more time, I could clean it up a little bit more. But for our listeners, this is going to be good enough. So here's after, and then I'll turn off clear. Uh, we were focused on really changing the way that organizations protected themselves uh, with respect to application security. We saw a pretty big gap in the market where there was an opportunity to get closer to protecting applications and APIs by being directly in those things rather than around them. So we started a company. Uh, so that's super tone clear. You can see why it's become a go-to for me, and it has saved me a ton of time on audio cleanup. If you aren't using a DAW or a program that allows you to use plugins, there are some options for you too. Descript users have access to Studio Sound. Riverside and Adobe have their own versions too, but they aren't that good. At least in April 2024, they aren't. And I can't advise anyone to use those two options unless you're okay with the results. So try it out first. Number four, mix your audio. Mixing is one of the things that can really help give that professional polish to your audio once you've gotten good recordings and cleaned them up. Many podcasters get overwhelmed when they think about things like EQ and compression. So they turn to presets because they don't really know how to dial them in. But the issue with presets is they rarely fit the needs of your audio. Wouldn't it be nice if there were plugins that could analyze your audio and give you a custom preset for each recording that you have? Luckily, Sonable has your back. They've released a number of smart plugins that help you dial them in. You play a bit of audio into the plugin and it uses AI or machine learning to analyze your track and suggest settings. I was a little skeptical at first, but I've been relying on these plugins for all of my clients' guest tracks for almost a year now with no hesitation. I'll demonstrate how easy they are to use to help put that polish onto a recording. In this example, I'll work on one of my guests' audio and I'll show you how I use Sonable's smart plugins to quickly add some polish to the audio. Let's listen to the before or the raw clip. Ah, uh, yeah, it's a lot of the processing is templated and the uh, actual content, it tends to just be like a punch and roll kind of thing. I don't usually have to splice my words together or anything like that. Because I, I want that podcast to be uh, 
not stream of consciousness, but like planned interconnected thoughts. I'm not too worried about how, how it comes out as long as it comes out and arrives at the ultimate question or reflection that I want people to think about. So the first thing is this is already a good sounding recording. So we're just going to add a little polish to this. Let's bring up smart gate because the first thing I notice is there's some background noise. Let's play this. And I'll talk about this more in a minute, but one of the first things I do when I'm editing is I'm going to cut out all of the dead air. Because if we listen back, we've got some breathing, we have the noise floor, and none of this is doing anything but just adding noise to our recording, or to our episode. Yeah. So what I'll do is I'll just cut all of this stuff out, cut the dead air out, and by dead air, I'm just talking about all of the sections of audio when that person isn't speaking. I'm not going to go through and cut out all of this stuff in between words. That's what the smart gate's for. So the first thing I'll do is choose a target. We're working with dialogue, so I'll choose speech. The screen changes saying, letting us know that it's looking for speech in our audio. This is our cue to play some audio into the plugin. Ah, uh, yeah. It's a lot of the processing is templated. So it took just a couple of seconds to give us a starting point. Unlike the EQ and the compressor, I found that the smart gate does need to be dialed in to get the best results. So I've already built up a preset. So all I have to do is choose the preset, retrain it on this voice. This preset tends to work on almost everything. Every once in a while, someone might trail off at the end of a thought, and I'll usually just move SmartGate to the last in my plugin chain because with the compression and input writing I apply, that levels out the audio pretty good, and I don't have issues with the gate clamping down when someone gets a little quiet at the end. But let's listen back. I did want to call out one spot in here. I hear some mouse clicking. About how... So right here, there's a little bit of a click. You might have to turn your volume up to hear it. But when we turn on the smart gate, that clicking's gone. Thoughts, I'm not too worried about how. And let's listen back to the whole thing, see what else it took out. Ah, uh, yeah. It's a lot of the processing is templated and the uh, actual content, it tends to just be like a punch and roll kind of thing. I don't usually have to splice my words together or anything like that. Because I, I want that podcast to be uh, not stream of consciousness, but like planned interconnected thoughts. I'm not too worried about how, how it comes out, as long as it comes out and arrives at the ultimate question or reflection that I want people to think about. So it does a really good job of basically removing anything that doesn't come from the mouth. Mouse clicks, weird little background noises. It does a pretty good job. It does a pretty good job of removing or reducing the volume of breaths, but it's not going to take out lip smacks and stuff like that. Now that we've done some basic gating, let's bring up the EQ. The EQ is pretty much the same type of setup. All of their plugins are pretty much the same. We'll go in, we'll look for speech. In this case, we have speech high and low. I've been unable to find any clarity on what high and low means, so I, I'm just assuming high and low is a reference to the pitch of the voice. So in this case, my guest has a lower voice, so I'll go speech low. I'll press the train or the record button, play some audio into it. Ah, uh, yeah. It's a lot of the processing is templated and the 
actual content. It tends to just be like a punch and roll kind of thing. I don't so we could hear instantly the EQ at work. I don't make a lot of changes to this. First thing I tend to do is I'll add another node so I can put in a high pass or a low cut filter. Then I'll adjust the cutoff as I play the audio and can see the analyzer, which I'll turn on now. Ah, uh, yeah, it's a lot of the processing is templated and the uh, actual content, it tends to just be like a punch and roll kind of thing. The one thing I forgot to mention is I'll adjust the lower range of the smart EQ to about 100 hertz. That way it's not applying stuff underneath my high pass filter. A lot of the processing is templated and the uh, actual content, it tends to just be like a punch and roll kind of thing. I don't usually have to splice my words together or anything like that. So let's take off the smart gate. I'll bypass it. You can watch the button down here. Ah, uh, yeah, it's... A lot of the processing is templated and the uh, actual content, it tends to just be like a punch and roll kind of thing. I don't usually have to splice my words together or anything like that. Because I, wa I want that podcast to be uh, not stream of consciousness, but like planned into... Any EQ is going to be fairly subtle. So you might be hearing this, you might not. But either way, there's a pretty noticeable difference. One of the other things that I'll use on this plugin is I'll turn on the adaptive mode, put that up to somewhere between about 25 and 50. And what that does is it allows the EQ to adjust to the incoming audio. So if there's some resonances in there, if there's some sibilance, it will adjust the EQ curve to try to counteract those elements. Ah, uh, yeah, it's... Ah, uh, yeah, it's... A lot of the processing is templated and the uh, actual content, it tends to just be like a punch and roll. So now that we've added some EQ, let's add some compression. And what compression is going to do is it's going to take these higher parts and bring them down so the volume is more consistent across the board. We're not going to see the changes in the waveform, but we will hear them. The plugin is pretty much like the others. We'll go for speech low, we'll train it. Ah, uh, yeah, it's. A lot of the processing is templated and the uh, actual content, it tends to just be like a punch and roll kind of thing. I don't usually have to splice my words together. The only real thing I do with this plugin is because podcasts get listened to in all sorts of noisy environments. We want to really tamp down on the dynamic range so listeners don't have to adjust the volume so much. And that's where the input writing comes in. I'll just click that on and now it will try to automatically adjust the, the volume as it's going so we don't have quite as much of a difference. It helps the compressor be able to level things out without applying too much compression. Ah, uh, yeah. It's a lot of the processing is templated and the uh, actual content, it tends to just be like a punch and roll kind of thing. I don't usually have to splice my words together or anything like that. So what I'll do now is I'll play the first part of this with all of the plugins on, and then I'll turn them all off so we can hear what's going on. Ah, uh, yeah, it's a lot of the processing is templated and the uh, actual content, it tends to just be like a punch and roll kind of thing. I don't usually have to splice my words together or anything like that. Because I, I want that podcast to be uh, 
not stream of consciousness, but like planned interconnected thoughts. I'm not too worried about how. Okay, so what I'm hearing is we're adding that polish, but I'm hearing some resonance that I didn't hear before. So I think I need to turn off the adaptive. Sometimes the adaptive mode can add resonances as it's adjusting. So let's see if we turn that off, if we get less resonance. Ah, uh, yeah. It's a lot of the processing is templated and the uh, actual content, it tends to just be like a punch and roll kind of thing. I don't usually have to splice my words together or anything like that. Because I, wa I want that podcast to be... That took care of the resonance I was hearing. But now that we've cleaned everything up, we got rid of that resonance. I'm still hearing a couple of things that we can quickly adjust to make it sound a little bit better. I'm hearing some mouth noise. It's not really loud, but it's still there. So I'll bring up Isotope RX's mouth declick. I'll set it for my starting point preset and we'll play it. It's not going to touch lip smacks and really loud noises, but it's going to clean up those internal mouth noises we hear when close miking someone. Ah, uh, yeah. It's a lot of the processing is templated and the uh, actual content, it tends to just be like a punch and roll kind of thing. I don't usually have to splice my words together or anything like that. Because I, wa I want that podcast to be uh, not stream of consciousness. So that cleaned up the little bits of mouth noise I was hearing. The last thing I'm hearing is there's still some noise when the gate isn't quite closing and we're hearing it in between as he's speaking. It tends to just be like a punch and roll kind of thing. I don't usually have to. So especially right here. Let's see if we can use another Isotope RX plugin. Let's try applying voice denoise. I'll just use it at my default setting. Punch and roll kind of thing. I don't usually have to splice my words together or anything like that. Because I, wa I want that podcast to be uh, not stream of consciousness, but like planned interconnected thoughts. I'm not too worried about how how it comes out as long as it comes out and arrives at the ultimate question or reflection that I want people to think about. Okay, so that really put the finishing touch on it. So let's go back and listen to it, and we'll start with the raw audio, and I'll start adding on plugins one at a time. Ah, uh, yeah. It's a lot of the processing is templated, and the uh, actual content it tends to just be like a punch and roll kind of thing. I don't usually have to splice my words together or anything like that. Because I, wa I want that podcast to be uh, not stream of consciousness, but like planned interconnected thoughts. I'm not too worried about how. So this kind of shows how we can quickly dial in some polish on our audio without really needing to know a whole lot. The smart plugins really make it easy to give you a good starting point. I have no problems sharing my presets for RX and the smart gate. You can copy them from this video. These are the settings I use 99% of the time. So go ahead and copy them. If you've got smart gate, that should cover you for most cases. Same thing with mouth declick, voice denoise. Copy my settings, use the smart plugins for EQ and compression, and that's all you need really. And then I'm also using the smart limiter, which I use to help me get my final loudness when I'm doing my mix. It's pretty much the same, it has a speech setting. I can choose Apple Podcast as my target. I'm not going to walk you through the whole setup because it's pretty much like everything else. Number five, editing. I know there are a lot of conflicting thoughts about editing. From editing makes things sound robotic or 
editing removes the authenticness of a conversation. Two, you need to edit out every imperfection. The reality sits somewhere in the middle. Learning the basics of editing can help improve how professional your episodes sound. So, for instance, a common thing I see podcasters do is they'll leave dead air in place. And I define dead air as the parts of a recording when someone isn't speaking. When they aren't speaking, there is still background noise, breathing, and other things that are contributing to the noise floor. Cutting these sections out makes things sound so much cleaner. And if you record in person, this step is even more crucial because you have mic bleed to contend with. Even if your goal is to keep everything conversational, your audience will benefit from some editing. As much as we think ums are a normal part of speech, people will um more frequently when they are being recorded than in a normal conversation, so it can't really hurt to remove some of them. Other things that can help your show sound better by removing or reducing are mouth clicks, lip smacks, long pauses, repetitions, tangents, stuff that doesn't contribute to the show. And remember, podcasting is an art form, so these are just recommendations based on the wants and requests of my clients. I've had clients who want to keep things loose and conversational. I've had clients that want everything taken out, all the imperfections taken out or removed. There's no set rules here. All that matters is that your listener finds your audio good enough to keep listening. And if you're not sure if your audio is good enough, or you're not sure how to improve your audio, I offer coaching sessions where I identify areas of weakness and provide actionable steps to help you stop guessing. It can be tough when you're working in a silo. And if you want to improve your understanding of audio and editing, check out Podcast Editing School at Tanziaster Academy. You get access to my editing course and my community where you get to have your questions answered by someone who edits podcasts professionally. As always, I hope you found this video helpful. Please share it with other podcasters you know who may find it valuable. I'm here to help the world produce better sounding content and podcasts. So thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.